There is a camera, a light, I think, a bike, a, a um, someone dancing, I think, um, two faces. for the festival really got me thinking about what elements I wanted to bring to an art gallery setting. So I thought, I want to go to the extreme. I love sci-fi, sci-fi is my thing. And I thought, how can I bring a real digital edge, something super modern and super far out? So I took my practice to the next level for this project. And I thought, well, I would love to come from out of space. And how awesome would it be if the sounds that I were making and if the audio sounds I was manipulating on the mics live were being transmitted to outer space. is a thing, this, this one in particular is for 4A and what you do is you take it in turns to lead. So say it was his turn to lead and he'd go and tell he found an artwork that he did or didn't like and then we'd all have a talk about it and discuss why we like it and what we don't like about it. And then it would be someone else's turn to lead, so maybe my turn to lead. And then I'd walk over there and I find something different and then we'd have a discussion about that. The last communal tours um, piece it's uh, an homage to an artist called Franz Erhard Walter and uh, it's about creating a sense of community throughout wearing something or throughout having to be a part of something. So you need two, at least two to ten people to become that sculpture. So I was looking at that. My work is very much about creating moments of community and, uh, and I was interested in what would happen if you launched that almost without yourself in the galleries and see what would happen. And then you sort of saw how uh, the families negotiated who was leading, who wasn't leading, how they were moving around the gallery. Uh, and that was very nice. It sort of slowed them down a bit and uh, made them more aware of the surroundings, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your group games number 63. Please listen carefully. With this one, with the Rules for Games, to have control of the space, to have a big voice of all of a sudden, to have a voice, which is normally you don't feel you don't have in these institutions. I made my own rule and I did pictures. At the beginning I didn't have an idea, but then um, I told my mum and then we came up with something. I printed um, my rule from a computer and I typed it on a computer and then, um, like, um, printed it and then I went to a room and just said my rule. My practice is very much about working with people and uh, sort of doing something together and collating material and then making something. In a way that's what's happening here, it's an ongoing thing happening at the festival where people do something with a framework that I've provided and then that sort of builds up throughout the two days. <laughs> I'm 
make some work in here, aren't we? order some stuff like from your parents handbag order it in kind of order of I think it was um, oldest to newest and I did um, also we did um, heaviest to lightest I really enjoyed it because you got to um, kind of see and order things in a special kind of order that you don't usually do every day and maybe I might do it at home sometime if there's Nothing to do, and I can't think of anything to do. Maybe I can do that. So that's the biggest thing, isn't it? So what's the next biggest thing? Yeah. So the next biggest. Yeah. Okay. Next biggest. Uh, lovely. Next biggest. Uh, this says contents of our bike organised by size from the smallest to the largest. Do you think that's us? Yeah. <laughs> Piece of art. What other activities did we do? Did you do music? Oh yeah, we did, did that just... music one where you sort of tap. It's patter tap or something like that, and you sort of tap yeah. and like. Wherever you tap, you sort of change settings. So wherever you tap, it makes a sound, and you sort of make shapes and sounds. Arthur's was more crazy, and mine was more ry rhythm. <laughs> Arthur was more. <laughs> mine was more. <laughs> we were pretending that the humans outside were zombie apocalypse, were zombies, and um, we were doing that. As we were doing that, we. We wanted to um, climb over stuff like uh, pretending to climb over like mountains. So the mountains were like the stairs outside there. Who wants to leave? Me, 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 me. me. Can you both leave together? Yeah. So you need to uh, guide us through the, through the zombies to the next picture that tells us something about what happened. Excellent, where are we going? This way. This way. So the idea is that um, we are in the year 2117 uh, and the tape button no longer exists. There's sort of just wilderness here. And we know that a hundred years ago during the family festival, play the gallery weekend, something huge happened. It might have been a wonderful thing, we're not quite sure, that changed everything in the world, or at least in London, or at least in Pimlico, or at least in this, on this site. So that's the kind of fiction of the work. And people are asked to navigate the space, to follow me around uh, as if we're in this wilderness. So uh, going over mountains, going through swamps, around alligators, and then to look at the pictures as if they somehow document what this big event was. So it, uh, uh, it's supposed to trigger some storytelling around um, 
this fictional event that changed everything in, 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 in the past. What can you see? Yes. And a girl was sad. Yes. The two men were trying to comfort the girl. And uh, and then what? And then at the end, once we finish the activity, a kind of tour is left for other people to follow, um, which has both in, both um, descriptions of the pictures that we've come up with together and like min mini maps of how to get to one point to the other. So I use these big like silvery sheets that look sparkly and fun and make like a cushy noise. So there's both a like a, a noise and a, a visual element that I think initially draws people in and it looks fun and, and we, the first thing we do is we build costumes out of those so I think it seems, hopefully it seems like quite a tangible activity when you first see it. For me really interesting is that I often, often my work puts adults in a situation in which they have to behave quite childishly so there's something kind of childish to my work for grown-ups uh, so it's been fun to sort of think about the idea of it not being too childish for, for children. He is going to try to rule the world. He will kill all the people except one mighty group of people, which is us, the fish and the sick. Excellent. How am I going to do this? A countdown of what? Of the times? Yeah. You can listen to three. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it was um, a dice game, not this. I, I didn't use my dice it was, um, with some people. So I had to roll a dice and then we moved it on this board and then we, and then each kind of um, square on the board had a special painting and then we had to go to that painting and someone had to talk about what they thought the painting was. Symbols, which is just over there. Yes, I talked about a painting, I think it was called the Three Symbols. And, um, and it's a bit like kind of a bridge with a small hut and then some symbols in the air. And can you see the, the red object behind the house? The uh, buildings from the pottery factory. Pottery factories, and they're, yeah. They're digging for clay. The whole idea was to kind of start an interaction between the viewer and the performer, the dancer and the hands being like the mediator. So it's hard to kind of say specifically the idea is translated, but we've seen different ways of how people interact with their hands. Um, I mean, we've, led, we've left little post-its um, saying, take me for, for a walk through the gallery. So just little instructions that kind of gets people a bit more animate, in animated their hands. So it's not supposed to distract their journey through the gallery, which was a big topic of the whole play the gallery that you're here to look around a gallery and you stumble upon activities. We did do research, so we came in a couple of times to see how people interact with the paintings, um, how they view, the way they walk into certain rooms to view, and the Turner Wing really appealed to us because there's a certain character or body design that people have when they're walking around a collection. Another um, idea was the idea um, that Turner would start from a white canvas and then paint onto that canvas, so dark. So we go from light to dark. So we try to project that inequality of movements, really edgy, soft movements to really kind of moody, detailed actions. And then also a sense of perspective as a painter, that there was um, really intricate ways that he would focus the eyes of people. Those to kind of focus, we use the hands to focus the angle, how people can view the paintings. 
So that was also another way that we took the angle of Turner. I think what motivated families to get involved in our activity was the sense of playfulness and uh, animating the inanimate. Because sometimes it's hard to kind of break that little um, distant that someone you don't know, the outsider. I mean, I always group it in the individual, the outsider and the group. And it's hard to know which group you're in or which out, who's the outsider. So the hands kind of plays the mediator. It's kind of, oh, look at, the, look at those wooden sculpted hands. And then you start to have a conversation with someone that you probably never speak to on another occasion. So that's a way in. And then the way you look and you move towards the hand, the body design. So actually your body starts to become a bit, a bit more active and just having a look at a painting but your body starts to sculpt. Yeah, you start to sculpt the body. And I think that kind of interaction, you can see the viewers observing other viewers. So it wasn't necessarily about me as a performer or Ya, the other performer, or Kwame, the other performer. It's about creating that space for people to have that relationships with one another, going, oh yeah, they're touching that hand. Oh, I can touch it as well. This activity is called The Tallest and the idea is to invite an adult and a child to work together to create a really tall person. I think the main thing is that sort of sculpture can look very different and then uh, so that sort of and children really wanted to look at them from different viewpoints that was a kind of quite a strong motivation for them and also because often, well not often, more, almost always the children are the kind of the shortest people in the family and suddenly that kind of dynamics changed quite drastically and that seemed to be fun as well for them. It was very amazing. I was like taller than my nana. When I'm this tall, my nana's bigger than me but I'm nearly growing up so I may get that big. Personally, I've been really interested in sculptures, so the 3D-ness and so how different the viewing experience is from looking at the pictures. So I really want sort of to, for the people, participants to feel that dynamics cause also the really uh, big difference. I'm a performance artist and then visual sort of, uh, but sort of with the background of theatre design, say costume design. So visual aspects of kind of performative uh, elements is really key to my uh, practice. And then I think that, uh, so it's, it's quite a sort of silly, playful thing, but I think I, I, I like to think that sort of that quite a strong visual uh, element and a sort of question about perception is in this uh, activity. We did the bit like that drama thing where you take the foam things and you go in front of a painter and you take two pictures and you have to just imagine what they're trying to do so you say act out a scene ours was trying to dig for treasure so um, but it included the artwork so it was like this there was this person a sculpture of a person and he was the one who told us that there's treasure here and we put an x marks a spot and then we pretended to dig and we took two photos and, and then... Did the man, how did the person explain it to us? He was minding. Well, he was minding, yeah. So, but the person who told us what to do was like this. So he had little cards and he'd do hand expressions and we'd read them and yeah, that was good. I also liked the, um, the, um, the making, building thing because it was very fun to make and um, I had a great time. Thank you. 